the hockey world has, uh, has always had its uh, share of clowns and entertainers. Uh, goalies are a quirky group of people, but the great thing about hockey has been the hockey mask. Jock Plant was the first person to wear one uh, back in the 1960s. It's unbelievable when you look at old footage of hockey and you see these guys like Gump Worsley and Jock Plant and, and old goalies not wearing masks. Andy Brown, I believe, was the last one to not wear a mask in the NHL. And, and they're just facing these shots. Of course, shots that was before the development of the really hard slap shot at that time. It was mostly wrist shots and snap shots. But at the same time, it's ridiculous. You have this puck coming at your face at many miles an hour, and you also have sticks going up and down in front of you. Anyway, there were some great masks in that early era in the 70s. Uh, Ricky and I wanted to take a, a look at back at some of them, and I don't, I don't know if we're going to go in any order here, Ricky. I have a personal favorite. Mine was always Jerry Cheever's, and we can save that for last if you'd like. Uh, but some of the current masks um, or, or the sort of the new wave of masks. I, I, I really like Brian Hayward's mask when he was the goalie of the fledgling San Jose Sharks. Uh, Hazy, now the voice of, uh, and you see there, it's the shark's mouth. Uh, I, I think it's a, it's a great look. You see his eyes coming through and these painters who have painted around the mask. But now, today, uh, we have um, another shark mask, don't we? Do we have another? Whose mask is this, Ricky? Thomas Grease. Yeah, Thomas Grease's mask going out, you know, in the old hazy way. This one looks a little jawsier. It looks a little uh, great whiter. <laughs> you know, it looks real. The painters have gotten better since Brian Hayward was in the pipes. Yeah. But, uh, and also the, the shapes of, of masks have changed drastically as well. So that's a great, the, these two are great. Uh, a good classic mask, one of my favorites. Growing up, I was a New York Rangers fan, and I used to go to games with my dad and, and my brother all the time. And uh, there was a Ranger goalie named Gilles Graton. And Gilles Graton was known, they called him Gratuni um, because he one. was crazy. And this is his lion mask. Well, apparently he believed, he was so crazy that he actually believed that he was in the Roman Colosseum. Like he actually believed that he was living a new life as someone who was a gladiator really? in the Colosseum, yes. <laughs> so he would wear the lion mask to defend him. And they would say that he was such a bad goalie, and this is not lore, there, there were tapes of this at the time, or I guess it was film at the time, of him getting out of the way of pucks when he was standing in the goal because of the, he thought they were stoning him in the, in the, in the age of uh, the Roman ages. So The, inter um, the interesting part about this one was, I, I don't, I'm not sure if you heard how he got to this mask. He read something, he read a story about tigers in National Geographic. And then just out of nowhere, he said, I, I want that on my mask. Right. And he and, put it on. But it looks like a lion. I yeah, thought it, was it looks a, like a yeah. lion, but. It's actually a tiger? Yeah. I thought it was the famous lion mask. To yeah, him, it's a tiger. It looks more tigery now that I look at it. I always thought it was a lion mask. But in any case, Gilles Graton played in the NHL for like 20 minutes. I don't think he had much of a career. 47 um, games. 47 games. That is uh, half a season. By the way, the mask is in the Hockey Hall of Fame, and I believe he wants the mask back. Right. But it doesn't. They said it belongs to the NHL. Oh, really? So well, you think it would belong it to the team because the team probably paid for it. I think it's part team, part NHL. <laughs> they and split he, it. He can't get it back. I they mean. went split so on Gilles Gratton. And Gilles yeah. Gratton can't get it back. Well, it was a really, really cool mask. Um, give me a go. Oh, you know, and then the, I love Curtis Joseph. First of all, Curtis Joseph has one of the great nicknames in sports, Cujo. Uh, and, of course, obviously, he had to have Cujo painted onto his St. Louis You know blues. where he got it from? Uh, where he got the mask or the nickname? The nickname, the nickname. Well, his name is Curtis Joseph. So uh, it was, I'm guessing... C.U. from Curtis, J.O. from Joseph. Well, it was actually a Stephen King novel. Well, I know that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's why yeah. Cujo. That's yeah. what, and that's Cujo's the character. Yeah. Okay. That's I, I that Just I went in implicitly knowing. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's go to the next one. Who are you going to put up on the screen now? Let's go with Steve Shields. Yeah, Steve Shields is a good one here. Uh, Steve Shields. Well, you know, let's let's. I think we need to before talking about Steve Shields we need to talk about Jerry Cheevers. Jerry Cheevers, whose mask is my favorite, there it is. Uh, awesome. You can see he's got the, this is what masks look like at the genesis of, of hockey masks. You see their ears were exposed, it was just had a little plate on the back, and then you pulled it over your face. Jerry Cheevers, every time a mark was made on his hockey mask, he would paint uh, stitches where he otherwise would have been hit by something. So those are all the stitches he would have had had he not had a mask. And now Steve Shields, generations later, after Jerry Cheevers, went ahead and had his mask, let's look at that again, painted just like Jerry Cheever's. Now, Not it, as cool. Well, I think very, very cool. I think almost right. as cool. It's the same thing, of course, the mask has, has evolved a little bit so that they have the cages in front so they have better eye 
you know, they, they can see better, better uh, lines of vision. But what, what, what he's done is he's painted Jerry Cheever's ears on the side of the mask yeah. and painted a back to the mask. So that's a painting. That's not, that's not Steve Shields' right. ear and hair. <laughs> I think it's really cool, actually. I think that's almost cooler than Jerry Cheever's mask. Uh, so I think those are really two cool masks. Do we have any more? Uh, Gary Simmons. AKA the Cobra. Yeah, Gary Simmons the Cobra played for the hapless uh, California Golden Seals at different times, the Oakland Seals. Yes, they, they had ugly teal jerseys. They were an unsuccessful franchise, though Jim Nielsen uh, was a, uh, they called him the Eskimo. He was uh, an Alaskan Eskimo who played for them and then played for the Rangers later. He painted the dragon. And it just shows you how far we've come. There's just an inexplicable dragon on his, uh, on his mask. He played for the Seals. If anything, it was a distraction from those ugly jerseys, which Mark, of course... Mark just asks, bless his heart, is that a snake or a dragon? Uh, I, uh, I, is it, I think it's a, it's whose a heart are we blessing? Mine or are we blessing his? Okay, his. It's a, oh, okay. Uh, well, we now think it's a cobra. Okay, it doesn't matter. It's, we know it's not a seal, uh, <laughs> and he played for the Seals. So that wasn't a great mask, but it was uh, it sort of indicative of what was going on in, in mask technology. Do you remember the who they became? Golden the Golden Seals. Seals um, I think, well, did they become the Kansas City Scouts? Uh -huh. Or the Cleveland Barons? Yes, they, the, yeah, Cleveland the Cleveland Barons. Barons yeah, yeah, they became the Cleveland Barons uh, with their captain Simone Nole and their goalie Gilles Meloche. Uh, I remember the Barons played. They were terrible. They were all <laughs> and Dennis Marouk was a was a big. Uh, he was their enforcer and and star. He scored a lot of goals. Who else do we have coming up? Is that it? Um, what's your I, What's your favorite? Do you have a I favorite? Really, I really like Nitty Maki's one. Oh yeah, Nitty Maki. It shows. It shows uh, I thought at first that was Al Capone. It is not. It is Frank the Enforcer, Nitty, Nitty N -I -T -T -I, of course, yeah, and that's the why partner to Al Capone. Right. I thought this one was pretty cool. Plus, it's it's very detailed. You have the the bullets flying down, and then you have the bullet holes by his chin. Right. I, I thought it was very detailed. I like that one. A no, lot. it's pretty good. I mean, I I don't like the flyers at all, but I'm gonna go with that being a cool mask. The bullets, the bullet. Uh, no shells. one likes the flyers outside of Philadelphia. That's true. because they're, yeah. they're a dirty team. They've cheated for years, and uh, and they used to beat the Rangers a lot. And they have Chris Pronger, who I don't like. And they have Chris Pronger, but Chris uh, Pronger's a good hockey player. Yeah, he is. He is a good hockey player. Uh, lastly. Go with uh, Gary, Br Gary Bromley, I believe. Gary Bromley, yeah. Let's see. Bromley, uh, w w and there was, it, he really was the initiator of the skeleton mask, which has seen lots of different incarnations. So mm -hmm. this is, we're showing you this, this is the archetype of that. This is the very beginning of skeleton mask history. Bromley played, I, I mean, I remember he played for Vancouver. Who else did he play for, Buffalo? The Does only team say? I remember is Vancouver. Vancouver, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, Gary Bromley, uh, of course, um, uh, started the skeletons, and then there were many, many skeletons after that. But to me, Jerry Cheevers and, and Steve Shields, those two masks are the best uh, that there have been because it all plays off of how cool Cheevers' mask was uh, originally. There's one more that you, that you brought up before we went on to this segment, and that was uh, Jim Rutherford. Oh, yeah, Jim Rutherford. It's an important one to see because Jim Rutherford, while not the first guy to wear a mask, and the mask also not one of the most dazzling masks. He was the first one to paint it. At that at, at that time, they were all white. I mean, mm -hmm. I remember Jules Villemur and and Eddie Jockman were the Rangers goalies. They just wore white masks. Mm -hmm. So so somebody had the idea that maybe they could paint a little bit onto uh, Jim Jimmy Rutherford. So they gave him kind of these this eye makeup, this Ace Freely Gene Simmons stuff going on on his face, uh, with a little bit of the end of the Detroit Red Wing on it. So I think that looks pretty cool. I think it's important because he, while he wasn't the first to wear a mask. He was the first uh, to paint on a mask, and, and that's important. And he's still with the Red Wings, I believe. I believe he's their GM. Anyway, uh, very cool uh, walk down mask memory lane. <laughs> it's the coolest thing about, uh, uh, about hockey uniforms is they get to paint their masks like that.